Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and beside me, right here, is the Raise 3D N2 Plus 3D printer, and this video serves as my official review. Let's do this. Are you ready? Go. Ah, oh, welcome back. Normally, uh, I'm in the garage doing my printer reviews. As you can see, I'm sitting on a chair next to the printer, and that's just because of the sheer size, and uh, the garage is downstairs. My office is upstairs, and there's no way I'm getting this down the stairs by myself while everybody else is asleep late at night. So yes, you get me in a chair next to the printer. Well, you know, I've had this Raise 3D N2 Plus for quite some time now, and I've been able to print a number of things with it. I've, I've printed some big things. Uh, I've printed some small things. I've, I've printed some dual color things because it has two different nozzles in it. I've, I've even printed myself a big giant mess. Yeah, that sucked. Overall, even including my unboxing video and the ensuing comment storm that came about from that video, it's safe to say that I've had more positive experiences with this printer than negative. Of course, that's a good start, but that's, that's not a full review in itself. So with that in mind, let's get technical. The Raise 3D N2 Plus has itself a solid aluminum frame measuring 24 inches wide, 23 inches deep, and it's nearly 38 inches from the top to the ground. It has a 12 by 12 by 24 inch build volume. The nozzles are all metal and will go up to 300 degrees centigrade, while the bed itself is build tack on glass and will go up to 110 degrees centigrade. It has a 7 inch full color touchscreen, and finally it's got a built in print resume power failure protection, so if you accidentally kick out the power plug, your print will be safe. Beyond the technical specifications, I, I really like this frame. I think it's very sturdy, and I like the ability to fully enclose the printer using the top that you can just set on top. I think that the lights on the inside really do a good job at illuminating your print, and I, that, that touch screen right there, it grows on me every time I use it, and it really, it really gives this printer a futuristic look. And speaking of that touch screen, let's dive a little deeper into that. The interface really allows for an easy way to control the printer when compared to using an LCD screen with a twist knob. The screen gives you an info-rich display of the printer and its current settings for heat on the nozzles, heat on the bed, and information relating to the current printing model. If you are using IdeaMaker, their slicing software, you'll see an image of the model on the screen. You can also dial in various settings and choose which models to print from the built-in memory, a USB stick, or an SD card. Idea Maker is their slicer, like I said, and what's really cool is it has the ability to send models to the printer using Wi-Fi, and then the printer stores that model on the internal memory. I'm gonna be honest, for the first month or two of using this printer, the only way I ever printed to it was via Wi-Fi. I never put in a USB stick, and I never put in an SD card. Everything was done wirelessly. Plus, IdeaMaker replicates the look of the touchscreen in a small window on your computer, giving you full remote control of the print job. I'd like to show you and talk about some of the prints I've made on this printer, and the first one is this. This is the MakerCoin of mine, and it's, it's printed in flexible material, and it printed really well. So to do flexible material on this machine, take the build plate out and flip it over. That way, the build tack is on the bottom and you're just printing straight to glass. Works great, and the direct drive system is able to pull that material through the line and all the way down to the nozzle. So it does a good job. It's flexible, look at that, it squishes. Oops. Of course, PLA is fine, and this is my 3D PN little logo uh, that I did in, in, a, in a PLA. The, the sides are smooth, nearly perfect, the lines are great, everything is proportionate and exactly how it should be. The PLA in this machine prints like a dream. Of course, if you're printing stuff, you don't have to just print my logo. You could print the star. Look at him. Turned out really good as well. This is just a PLA, and, and uh, the eyeballs are, are a black PLA that I, that I printed and stuck in the holes. Uh, sides are good. The, the, the top is flat. It doesn't have a lot of infill, but it was able to bring the material over the top, and it turned out extremely well. I love this model. 
I really wanted to print myself a Benchy because I had some small ones, but I've never printed myself a big Benchy. So I decided to give it a go and this is how it turned out. And it did an amazing job. I used a, um, a honeycomb infill and this is a PET material. Handled it just fine. The top layers are incredibly smooth. The overhang of the bow here is, is smooth as well. You can see that the letters all came out on the bottom. You can see it says hashtag 3D Benchy in the back. Uh, I know printing 3D Benchy this big isn't so much a torture test for the printer, but it, it sure makes a cute little boat. Kids are pretty happy with it. Do you remember when I printed this? This is the Thorn from Destiny and all the red parts on this gun were printed on that printer and it, it did a great job. I had a bunch of extras of these two. I should probably put it together, but, but this, this turned out extremely well. I like this red. Kirby even customized it. It says 3D printing nerd. So cosplay and prop items on this printer, no problem at all. And finally, uh, I printed a banana. Let's talk about some of the things I really like about this printer, starting with the print quality. I think the print quality from this printer is phenomenal. I think that the print quality from this machine produces models that can rival the print quality of models from other well-reviewed desktop 3D printers. But what this machine has over them is an enormous build size. So not only are you getting high quality printed models, you're getting them at a very large size. I do like the overall layout and design of this machine. I like this big, large front door to access the build plate. I like the side door, which lets you get at the filament itself. The removable top, I think is handy because sometimes you don't wanna keep all that heat on the inside. And if the top was hinged, then you'd have to worry about it leaning or possibly breaking off. I think removable is the way to go. They did a good job by putting casters on the bottom so that you can roll it around. It's a very large appliance and you, you need to be able to move it. So I think wheels were the best option. And uh, the, the design is great. It looks futuristic. It looks cool. I really like how this printer looks. Finally, I really like the support and ongoing conversations I've been having with the Raise 3 d team. They've been incredibly supportive at all hours of the night. They've been receptive on Twitter. They've been receptive on email. And it's not just me as a reviewer seeing this. I'm seeing them active on social media, engaging in conversations, and trying to talk to people about their product in a fun and easygoing way. So kudos to Raise 3 d for maintaining a really good customer experience. Let's talk about some of the things I don't like about this printer. The fan that blows across the throat of the extruders is also the same fan that blows air down onto your 3D printed parts. This means that you have no control over that fan speed. If you're to print ABS, normally you'd wanna turn off the fan that blows down onto your parts because you shouldn't have your blower fan going when you print ABS, but you cannot do that in this situation because you cannot turn off the fan that blows across the throat of the extruder. So what are you to do? Raise 3D gives you two small clips that you can fit over the fan shroud to effectively block most of the air from coming down onto your printed part. I mean, yes, it does work, but at the same time, it feels cheap, and I don't think that belongs on a printer of this caliber. I firmly believe that a printer of this caliber should give you a designed extruder that allows you to have fans controllable by the slicing software. Next, I'd like to talk about the printer bed. And the printer bed itself arrives level from the Raise 3D factory. In fact, that was true for me when I got this printer. The print bed was for the most part level. It wasn't level on the edges of the print bed and I did have some issues printing to the edges I was able to manually level the print bed, but it was incredibly frustrating and difficult because there are 13 different adjustment points underneath this bed in order to level it. I think a printer of this caliber should include some form of auto bed leveling. You could probably fit a BL Touch sensor on the extruder that moves around or possibly some sort of induction probe. I don't know what the right solution would be, but I think offering some sort of automatic bed leveling or assisted bed leveling on this machine would go a very, very long way. Last but not least is a little bit of a nitpicky thing, but I think it's a big enough issue to where it should be addressed. The spool holder on this side of the machine 
when a spool is on it, the spool itself keeps the filament door from being able to close all the way. In order to close the door all the way, you have to reach in from the front of the machine and move the spool and then close the door. But this means the spool slightly rests on the door frame and rubs. There's not enough friction there to cause an issue, but I think that there's plenty of room there in order to fix this. And I think Raise 3D should fix that issue. In the end, I think this is a really good printer. I think this is a really, really, really good printer. This is not a great printer. And I think it's not a great printer because of some of the negative points that I listed. That said, none of those negative points are deal breakers. The print quality from this printer is great. And if you have the budget for this printer and the space for this printer and you end up buying this printer, I sincerely think you will be happy with this printer. Well, that's it. This is my review of the N2 Plus from Raise 3 d I hope you found it informational. I hope you found it educational. I hope you had a good time watching it. Give it a thumbs up if you found it useful, educational, or informational. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about anything I said or showed. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Of course, I've got a lot of great content coming up. Last but not least, don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys. As always, high five.